Let's take a look at the hand calculations one can do using boundary layer theory to predict expected results. So we have looked at the mathematical model, we have looked at the numerical solution strategy used to solve that mathematical model and the errors introduced by that strategy. We are moving on to doing hand calculations to predict expected results. And boundary layer theory um, essentially divides the flow into two regions. So this is the edge of the boundary layer. And within the boundary layer, the flow is affected by viscosity. And outside the boundary layer, it's not affected by viscosity. And within the boundary layer, you make the assumption that the flow is mostly along the plate. So U is much larger than V. Um, but the gradient in the x direction is much lower than the gradient in the y direction for the u velocity and similarly for v velocity. So if I look across the boundary layer at any given x location, um, the velocity u is going from 0 to close to 1 here in our case. Now, this boundary layer thickness is exaggerated. This is going to happen very quickly, and which is why this gradient is much higher. Similarly for the v-velocity. And these are assumptions that are not made in the, in the fluent solution. Um, and so we can check these assumptions from the fluent solution. Now, with these assumptions in the boundary layer theory, you go back to the governing equations and you make simplifications. And we have seen these equations before. And if I look at the y-momentum equation, which is f equal to ma in the y-direction, it turns out I can knock out this term, this term, this term, this term and I get dp dy is equal to zero in the boundary layer. So boundary layer theory says that as I go across the boundary layer, the pressure doesn't vary, and the pressure is really the pressure, uh, at this point is really the pressure imposed by the, the outer flow. And that's something we can check. We can check dp dy is, whether dp dy is zero in, or close to zero in our fluent solution. Uh, the, the remaining two equations, you can knock off this term, and now the pressure is uh, imposed by the, the outer flow, and the outer flow in this case is inviscid flow past the flat plate uh, because the boundary layer thickness is vanishingly small. Um, so actually this term also drops out in the flat plate case. So we are left with two PDEs, which are still challenging to solve. Now Blasius um, reduced this to one ordinary differential equation using the similarity principle. And what that principle is that if I look at the velocity profile at a, a location here, I just need to stretch it to get the velocity profile at that location. And that stretching is proportional to root of x. So essentially, if I know the velocity profile here, I just stretch it and I get the velocity profile here, which means I just need to determine one velocity profile. And Using that similarity principle, um, Blasius showed that we can reduce the two PDEs to one ODE, which looks like that, which might be familiar from boundary layer theory, and F is related to the string function. And then you have the associated boundary condition. So essentially you have a boundary value problem again, but it's a much simpler boundary value problem. It turns out even this much simpler boundary value problem, you have to use a computer to solve it. Um, and then when you get f, you can determine the velocity profile. So we will use that, you know, the velocity profile that comes from f and compare it to the velocity profile that comes from fluent. And then once we know the velocity profile, we know what is the friction at the wall from the gradient of the velocity profile. And once we know the friction, we can integrate that and find the drag. And that drag can be non-dimensionalized in this fashion to get the drag coefficient and boundary, you know, if um, the, the, the solution for f gives this expression um, for, for the drag coefficient. And this way it's related to the, um, the square root of the Reynolds number. So that's again something we can check against the drag coefficient from fluent. So that's a quick summary of the hand calculations.